and Ghana Exim, chairpersons and board members of GIPC and Ghana Exim, the beautiful Nadia from the Tor uh, Diaspora Relations Office in the Office of the President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My apologies if I missed out anyone. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. And I, I was thinking that after yesterday's intervention, I, did, I wouldn't have much to say, but listening to what has gone on this morning, I have a few things that I want to share with you. The old Ghanaian adage, and I'll say it in three, to wit, blowing the speck out of each other's eyes is the reason why two antelopes walk together. Highlights the importance of friendship and cooperation for sustainable development and embodies the essence of the Ghana-Canada partnership. We need each other. Ghana has had cordial relations with Canada for over six decades. And over the years, this bond has been strengthened through shared values, the Commonwealth membership, and diplomatic camaraderie and bilateral trade. As fate would have it, the two countries even share a common national day of 1st July. Ghana has also been a strategic partner with a substantial number of Ghanaian professionals and businesses in Canada, keenly contributing to developing the Canadian economy. Several of our compatriots and our children have studied here and continue to study here. I believe even the information minister's mother studied here, as he indicated yesterday. And he's also highlighted the fact that Canadian exports to Ghana in the last 25 years have increased at an annualized rate of about 8.97% from $23.8 million in 1995 to $372 million currently. We could do more to even out the imbalance, and that's why we're here, because we're doing just about $100 million to Canada annually. We could do more. Undoubtedly, the COVID-19 had a universal impact, and Ghana, like all other countries in the world, was not spared its devastation. As global supply chains were disrupted and national borders shut down, lockdowns effected to control the spread of the virus, countries and citizens resorted to technology for survival and continuity of operations. So that was the silver lining in the cloud for us. What would have taken us decades to achieve, we achieved in a few years, because people understood how pivotal technology was to continued and sustained uh, development of our world. Before the pandemic, as if we anticipated it and started preparing for it, we had already begun laying the foundations for a digitalized economy in 2017, and we were therefore able to transition to online platforms without too much difficulty. Prior to the outbreak, from our assumption of office, from the assumption of office of His Excellency Nanado Dankwe Kufuado in 2017, we began speedily implementing digital policies and introducing platforms aimed at digitalizing public sector agencies, reducing inefficiencies and corruption and increasing revenue collection. These included the paperless port system, the Ghana Post National Digital Address System, the Digital National ID Card, Mobile Money Interoperability, the e-government, e-procurement portal, e-justice system, amongst many others. At the onset of the outbreak, the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization also took steps to mitigate the impact of the lockdown, particularly as restrictions of movement were in place and internet usage had sharply increased. Ghana was the first country, and I believe the only country, 
to specifically assign free spectrum to mobile network operators to support COVID-19 relief efforts and to help improve the quality of experience through the users. As more people moved online, severe congestion was experienced on our networks. And this is one key step that we took to enable them to have more capacity to utilize for providing services to all networks and all people, to increase for data, increase to cater for increased data traffic and online activities, including e-learning, meetings, working from home, and even religious and social events. We also directed the NCA to permit network operators with 2G licenses to deploy 3G technology over that spectrum in unserved and underserved areas at no additional fee to enable all our citizens to also have access to high-speed data connectivity. We rolled out virtual public offices that allowed employees to work and collaborate remotely. A smart workplace solution developed by Iganen was launched across departments and non-department specific functions, such as payroll, which were all digitized for over 300 public agencies. In spite of the COVID restrictions and school shutdowns too, we worked with telecoms companies, schools, and school management, and the information ministry to set up portals which were zero rated, meaning all these educational portals didn't attract the usage of any fee. And the Ghana Learning TV and Radio for Basic Schools, the Learning Management System for Tertiary Institutions, and iCampus, which also provided offline access to video lessons, notes, and virtual, lab, virtual labs, were part of several other in initiatives introduced for the education sector to lessen the impact of COVID. Without technology, it would have been very difficult for any country in the world and all our citizens to live fairly normal lives during the pandemic. Across the world, the health sector was the most hit when the pandemic started, but several hospitals were also pushed beyond their limits and were full to their capacities. Interestingly, Ghana was the first country to use the medical drone system to deliver test samples to um, testing sites across the country and also deliver difficult medical supplies in emergencies to the uh, health centers across the country. This drone system is an automated on-demand delivery service for medical supplies making health service delivery accessible to all. It's the, Ghana is the second country in Africa, after Rwanda, to implement the delivery of medical supplies to remote areas through drones. There are six distribution centers in Ghana, Omenaku, Empanya, pardon my pronunciation, Vopsi, Sefioso, Ketekrachi, and Enum. Through this drone delivery, system. The country has made millions of deliveries of medicines, blood, and vaccines to very remote areas and has saved many lives. Ghana has the largest medical drone delivery service in the entire world. We've also implemented a dedicated USSD code assigned to all networks to make payments and subscription renewals of our national health insurance very easy. At the click of a button on a cell phone, you can quickly check the validity of your health insurance or pay to renew your subscription. And this prevents people from trekking all the way to NHIS offices to form long queues and pay for their renewals. Ghana Cares of our Tampa program. In 2020, the government launched the COVID-19 alleviation and revitalization of Enterprises Support Initiative, dubbed the Ghana Cares of our Tampa program. This post-COVID program was specifically designed to help stabilize, revitalize, and transform our economy to create jobs and prosperity for Ghanaians over a three-year period. Excuse me. 
It's in two phases. A stabilization phase that ran through July to the end of 2020 and a revitalization phase from 2021 to 2023. The first phase builds on the actions already taken by the government under the COVID alleviation program, including stabilization of the economy, ensuring food security, supporting businesses and workers, strengthening the health system, and passage of legislation to facilitate quick economic recovery. <coughs> Your weather. <well out. laughs> The second phase will focus on supporting commercial farming and attracting educated youth into agriculture, building Ghana's light manufacturing sector, developing engineering machine tools and ICT digital economy, developing Ghana's housing and construction industry, and renewing and optimizing the implementation of government flagships and key programs amongst others. This program, we hope, will move Ghana into the industrialization, agriculture, and manufacturing phase to help revamp the economy, create jobs, and alleviate poverty. Now, to speak a little bit about fintech. Financial technology has seen a sharp rise in Africa, especially Ghana, transforming lives, creating jobs, fostering innovation, and causing a spike in financial inclusion across the continent. In 2020, the Bank of Ghana took steps to deepen financial inclusion in accordance with the Payment Systems and Services Act, which was passed in 2019. And the bank issued its first dedicated electronic money issuer license to a local fintech company. Through this process, Peer-to-peer -peer transfers, cash-in, cash-out transactions, international money transfer, bill payments, airtime top-ups, amongst other transactions, are regulated by the Bank of Ghana. As I indicated yesterday, even funeral donations are now being received electronically. And uh, the incidents in the past where funeral donations could disappear into other pockets has now been largely minimized. With the government's digitalization heightened in the heat of COVID-19, most Ghanaians resorted to mobile money, e-transactions, and other digital modes of payment to make life easy. This saw a surge in fintech companies between 2020 and 2021. And the Bank of Ghana recorded registered over 71 fintech companies in the country. Some of them are even assisting churches to also receive donations from those of us who follow their services online remotely. So you can pay your, your church collections from the comfort of your home and the, the work of God will not also suffer under the excuse that we are all not going to church because of lockdowns. It also provides an excellent opportunity for investors to explore and help expand the sector because the entire continent is going digital. And that is a new area where you can put your money. I've said several times that I don't see why in those of us on the continent still have to use Visa and American Express credit cards for our transactions and pay the user fees for every transaction that we use those cards for. Why can't we also develop our own local payment solution for the continent, which will enable all these huge transaction fees to stay on the continent, 2% per transaction, that's steep. Some charge up to 3, 3.5% per transaction. So just imagine the number of times you use your credit card in or outside the continent and where all those monies are going to. 
And if we can't, using our own local tech industries and fintechs, develop our own payment solutions, which will enable all these monies to stay on the continent and to be used for the development of our continent. And uh, that's something that I keep challenging our young tech entrepreneurs to come up with the useful solutions that will enable us to do that. We've done that with mobile money. <coughs> We've done it with mobile money. We can do it with credit cards as well. There's some recent inspiring developments that I want to share with you. I'm aware that priority areas in Canada's engagements with Ghana in recent times border on climate smart agriculture, women's economic empowerment, technical and vocational education and training, and access to finance and business training for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, all geared towards inclusive economic growth. Some developments in our economic landscape provide inspiration for investors and avenues for greater cooperation amongst like-minded people. I spoke about the After Hub I launched a few weeks ago yesterday, but it is um, supposed to promote, enhance, and advance digital trading, electronic commerce, marketplace, and general services in Ghana to the rest of the world, both within Ghana and within Africa and ultimately become a platform by which others in the diaspora can also engage with SMEs on the continent. We are working towards making it easier for technology startups, small and medium enterprises, and other producers of goods and services, including ICT services, to find markets across Africa. I heard a story about some young Ghanaian lady who produces baobab ice cream, the baobab fruit ice cream. And she couldn't find enough raw materials in Ghana. She had to go to Togo to source for her raw materials to continue producing. Now, if we have one, a one-stop shop where people can source for all the products that they need to produce, they can find their regulators, can look for and receive financing for their products, get all the regulatory assistance that they need instead of jumping from one agency to the other, and be certified to conduct business there. And so either you as the producer or someone who is a service provider can also look for opportunities on that particular one-stop uh, one shop and engage in businesses. And that is what the After Hub is designed to be a one-stop shop for regulators, financial institutions, payment services providers, small and medium enterprises, logistics service providers to do a business in Ghana to the rest of the continent and beyond. We invite organizations in Ghana to partner Ghanaian firms, some of whom already have footprints on the continent, to export their goods and services across Africa and beyond. I was encouraged that even within sectors, like we saw in the video, the Ajoa um, hub, that they are aggregating service providers onto a single hub so that at the click of a button, you can locate whichever services that you want. We encourage all these hubs to also be located on the after hub so that they can expand their footprint even beyond their own small circle. With the start of the continental free trade area as well, investment opportunities abound in business process outsourcing as Ghana reclaims its place as a hub for call center, data processing, data science, and various digital services for businesses all over the continent and beyond. The financial industry which undergirds economic activity has witnessed exciting developments in, re in recent times. These include, as I've indicated, the Bank of Ghana uh, FinTech, the Payment Systems and Settlements Act, the Bank of Ghana FinTech Innovation Sandbox, the introduction of a Ghana Pay app, which is like a mobile money application for the banks. And um, His Excellency Ray Sowa started when he was MD of Commercial Bank 
with what's the name of your G money. G money. It's now being rolled out across all banks in Ghana so that they can also offer similar products like um, what the telcos are offering to um, subscribers. The Bank of Ghana is also piloting an ECD project aiming to introduce an electronic CD. It is not uh, cryptocurrency. It is backed by um, our CD. But let me just make a caveat here. I think that cryptocurrencies are just will happen. It's only a matter of time. And it will come into widespread usage. And we shouldn't also be observers of the space as well. So I encourage us to think through how we're going to utilize all these new innovations to spare the development of our economies too. I'm saying this mindful of the fact that a few years ago, um, what we now commonly use, video calling and, and WhatsApp calling, uh, voice over IP was illegal. And I know because I was in the industry and several steps were taken to clamp down on all those operators who were using uh, voice over IP services in, in not just Ghana, but across the continent. Now it is the norm. In the same vein, cryptocurrencies that are now illegal may very well become the norm many years down the line. So let's just keep watching the space. That's all that I'll, I'll say for now. The Ghana.gov payment platform um, is also one in innovation that has been introduced to make it easier for people to apply for and pay for government services electronically so that we can eliminate the Goro boys and reduce corruption in the, in, in the public services sector as well. And I can say for a fact that it has increased government revenue generation several fold and enabled people to apply for government services seamlessly without hassle, pay for it, receive notification of receipt of their payment. The money is not leaking into anybody's private pockets. It is going where it is actually intended to be utilized for the paying for the development of our country. It's being rolled out to all, I think about 20 agencies are now started the pilot. It is now being rolled out to all MMDAs to ensure that you can apply for all those services. Know exactly how much you are supposed to pay for any service provided by the public sector in advance. Pay for it electronically. You don't need to know anybody. You don't need to put any weight on in, in any application. Once you apply on that platform, your payment is received. You will receive notification of when to pick up whatever it is you applied for. These developments, are, which are in tandem with the National Payment System Strategy, will foster efficient payments, improve financial inclusion, enhance financial innovation, and move the country further towards a cash light society. You take that for granted here. Very few of you use cash for any of your transactions. You are either tapping and going or using your cards or other payment mechanisms for it. In Ghana, we are very much attached to our banknotes and like to feel the rustle of our paper money. But that is also fueling all kinds of antisocial activities. So we are trying to move people slowly towards more reliance on electronic payments as against cash payments for transactions, knowing that that will also reduce the corruption in our system. We're not just talking about fighting corruption. We're putting in place the systems that will make it more difficult for people to have unauthorized access to public funds. And that is what we're using technology for. And I can't end without talking about women's empowerment. I mean, I'm sure people would have wondered whether I was okay <laughs> or not.
So with regard to digital inclusion too, we are determined to narrow the gender digital divide. The women empowerment and capacity building, since my assumption of office has been one of the key priorities that we've undertaken with the expansion of the girls in ICT program as one of the means of breaking the bias against females and allowing girls to explore and harness their potential in the ICT space. And I keep telling them, you are only limited by your own imagination. You, you, there is nothing you cannot do if you put your mind to it. If you are raised to think that all things technology are for boys and so it's a no-go area for girls, you will not get involved in it. But there's nothing a man can do which a woman cannot do and do even better. So we've taken the program to almost all regions in the country, and the outcomes have been astounding. Young girls as young as nine, after a week's instruction, are building their own websites and developing their own simple games and applications using the coding tools that we teach them, aspiring to be robotics engineers in future, and software and other, uh, and it's exciting. And so we're going to do more. We're looking at training some 5,000 girls in basic ICT skills and coding this year. So far, 3,000 girls from various districts in the Bono East Ahafu, and Bono regions have benefited from the program this year. This year marks 10 years since the program was introduced in Ghana. From 20, 12 to date, to 2022, just about 5,000 girls had, been, had benefited from it. This year alone, we aim to double that by training 5,000 girls in 2022. We've done 3,000 so far. And in October, November, we're doing the 2,000 that's remaining. And we're going to the northern region and Savannah. And, and we hope that very soon, these 5,000, these 10,000 girls that have already been trained will establish their own tech startups, become tech entrepreneurs, who will also employ others to expand the tech value chain. They are good investment opportunities for African diasporas in Ghana, in Canada. And we can begin by creating opportunities for those companies here, creating opportunities for these young girls to do internships and other on-hand on training opportunities for them. I'm very excited about the potential that that um, provides for us. And because of the success of this program, this is geared towards primary and junior high school girls. But our tertiary girls have also insisted that they want to be part of this training. So we've moved to women or young ladies in ICT from the girls in ICT, and we're training um, young ladies in our tertiary institutions on cutting edge artificial intelligence, mass machine learning, and coding, uh, cybersecurity, and other innovative in initiatives as well. There are a lot of opportunities as I bring my um, intervention to a close. We want to develop ICT with the youth as our pivot. We believe, as I indicated yesterday, that if we give our young people the critical skills that they need today to engage with the fourth industrial revolution, they will provide the human resources for the global world of work in the next 10, 20 to 30 years. Because the demographics are on our side, Africa has a youthful population while the rest of the world is aging and they would need people to man the digital systems that they're putting in place here in Canada and other parts of the world. What better things can we do than to give them the skills that they need today to be able to sit in Ghana and work globally using the uh, technological tools at our disposal today. It is doable and that's what we're focused on doing. So there's a lot of opportunity for upskilling our young people, providing them with digital skills. 
giving them the know-how, uh, uh, helping them to establish startups and other small micro tech entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship ventures. And that's where you all who are interested in this area come in. We have trained several young professionals with marketable skills in ICT. The government is setting up science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education focal schools in all the regions. They're fantastic edifices. And I've seen some of those coming up in the Ahafu, Gwosu area, and in Bosumchi area. And in all the regions, we're setting one of these STEM education focused schools, we're setting them up in. Some of them are for girls alone with high tech, introduction to high tech ways of, of learning. And they're very excited about it. We're also taking advantage of that to train our young ones in these areas and whip up their interest in STEM and ICT as they grow up. We're also taking advantage of our status as an English speaking country to attract business processing orders and outsourcing bank of, back office jobs from the US, Canada, and the rest of Europe. We currently have a large number of trained ICT professionals taking on several remote jobs from other parts of the world in the comfort of their homes and, and doing marvelously because they have the requisite training for the international job market. And this is an area that all of us should be looking at investing in to boost the human capital development and transform most of these young professionals into entrepreneurs in the ICT space and deal with the problem of youth unemployment in our country as well. I can guarantee you that this will steadily double or triple your investments and open other doors for you. There are other specific investment opportunities, such as partnership with local specialized institutions, such as the Kofi Annan Center of Excellence in ICT, in the areas of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other emerging technologies for capacity building in the knowledge economy, establishment of data centers and cloud computing opportunities um, where it's working with Smart Africa Initiative to set up a federated cloud system on the continent so that we can host our data locally and ensure that it is well protected and managed and only the right people have access to our data. Data protection is something that we take very, very seriously. And Ghana is currently chairing the African Data Protection Organization and sharing our experiences with others who don't have data protection laws and cybersecurity infrastructure as well. Um, we want joint ventures or other arrangements with Ghanaian fintech companies, as was demonstrated here yesterday, to serve largely underdeveloped sectors on the continent. I've spoken about business process outsourcing, that's an opportunity. Supply of high-tech telecommunications equipment is also an opportunity. People complain that we're only doing business with Chinese firms, but they are the ones who are offering us the easy financing options to enable us to roll out our telecoms infrastructure. Canadian firms, there's an opportunity there for you as well, so come and let's talk, and let's not just leave it to um, the Huawei's and the ZTE's, who currently seem to have a lock on our telecoms equipment manufacture, uh, supply market. Technology parks, mini technology hubs, is also um, an, an area where we can, there are a lot of opportunities available for investment. We want to expand beyond Accra and build digital centers across the rest of the country. We have innovation hubs that we are renovating to become mini tech hubs and, and, and mobile labs across the country to train more young people and provide them with digital skills. Back office operations for financial institutions are also an opportunity waiting for us to also get involved in. 
the key digital governance infrastructure and last mile connectivity to improve access and drive down cost is also available for um, those who are interested to engage in. I would love for us to expand the assembling and manufacturing and supply of computers, mobile phones, and other accessories locally, and it is doable. So if you have partners who are in that sector, please come. I'm sure Free Zones will happily provide you with, they talked about technology parks that are being established all over, will happily provide you with the land to set up a device assembly plant to supply for our local consumption and for the rest of the sub-region. Now let me end by saying that Ghana is the second most visited country on the African continent for African diasporans in Canada. That's what I've been told. This means there are several investment opportunities in Ghana for the African diaspora. And as it stands, we have just scratched the surface. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, no one will build our country for us than ourselves. They will come. That is why this diaspora engagement is so absolutely critical. You have family back home. You still identify as Ghanaians, no matter how long you've stayed outside. It's still in your blood. Let's build our country together. Let's put our skin in the game. Let's own the development of our own country. Let's work with partners. I'm not saying we don't need them. I said that yesterday. Let's find willing partners. But whereas experts would repatriate whatever profits they make, you will keep some in your country and your children and children's children and your families will benefit from it. It's incumbent on all of us to know that we are all in this together. If Ghana works, I'm sure many of you would quite happily join Alex Dade and all of us and Lawrence to come back home to work. And the systems that we are in place here that you are enjoying, we're trying to build those same systems in Ghana to make it comfortable for all of us to work seamlessly and comfortably and conveniently together. Your country needs your help. I want to just encourage you and let you know that don't believe everything that you read on social media. Our country is not burning. We're there. Yes, we have challenges like everyone else, but life is going on at pace. You have challenges here too. The cost of everything has gone up. We are not throwing up your arms in despair and saying that let's, let's um, shut the country down and walk off. You're still persevering. We have a favorable investment climate, which provides an enabling environment that is suitable for investment in ICT and various other sectors as have already been enumerated to you. And if, while some Ghanaians are knocking, I think we're a very pessimistic people because we always focus on the negatives without looking at the positives. All flights to Ghana are always full. Half of the people on those flights are foreigners. Ask yourself, if we didn't have anything in our country, what were they coming there to do? <clears throat> so please, baby, uh, oh no, Gio, no. We let's realize that we are all in this together. And so come and invest in the land of golden opportunities, which is your Ghana, and the time is now. We welcome you. Aquaba. <laughs>